Um, so just something to be aware of. We're recording it so that way others who uh, weren't able to join us uh, this morning uh, will be able to rewatch this recording at a later time and um, you know see what we are presenting to you this morning. Um, so what we'll be showing to you guys is the uh, pavement laid uh, template in Site Manager uh, that you can fill out from the DWR screen. And can you guys see my screen yet? Oh. So now you can. Yep, we can see it. Awesome. All right, so what we'll be showing you this morning is uh, how to access and fill out the uh, pavement laid template uh, that's attached to a DWR. Uh, and then we'll also show you the reports, uh, or report rather, that you can run on the portal to see a summary of all of the uh, pavement laid records um, uh, that you've entered for a particular contract. So I'm gonna run through the template and show you guys how that works. And then Brad, who's hopefully on the call, will show us uh, the report. Brad, are you on the call? Yep, I'm in here. Okay, excellent. Um, I see that somebody raised their hand. Was there, was there a question before we got started? Looks like Aaron, you raised your hand. Okay, I'll assume there's no question. It might have just been an accidental click. Uh, Zach, can you uh, keep an eye on uh, the chat window and also um, in case people raise their hand or uh, whatever looking for uh, to ask a question? Yep, no problem. Okay, great. So the others that I have on the call, like I said, Brad is going to be showing us the report. Zach is going to be uh, helping us kind of moderate uh, the meeting or facilitate. You know, he's going to, you know, kind of keep tabs of, um, you know, keeping you guys uh, on mute or uh, whatnot just so we can have a good recording. Um, if you do need to unmute yourself to ask a question, you can absolutely do so. I'll pa be pausing at different intervals to allow for those questions. Um, and uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. So um, I'm just going to kind of dive right into it here. I'm not going to uh, show all the jumps to get into a DWR. I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows how to access a DWR, how to open up your contract, how to apply your date, and all that stuff. Um, so assuming we filled out the, everything about your DWR as you would expect to normally do, you've selected a contractor, you've filled out your equipment, staff, et cetera. Back here on the work item screen, um, where you will do your item postings, um, for particular pay items, um, we are starting to implement templates um, attached to those items. Um, we're probably not going to develop a whole lot of them uh, just because the life, lifespan of Site Manager uh, that we have left is pretty short. Um, but just know that there are select items that do have templates on them, uh, one of them being uh, stuff relating to concrete pavement. Um, so this first item, or this item that I have highlighted in blue is um, just your concrete pavement class PR 3500, or yeah. Um, so when I double click on this item and I come in to do a normal posting, clicking my new button, everything looks relatively the same except for one thing. You'll notice that your placed quantity field is grayed out. Um, that is the field that you normally would be entering in the quantity that you want to pay, uh, pay for or you know list that you install for the contractor. So. Um, you'll still fill this section out just as you normally would. You'll state which contractor did the work. Um, you don't need to fill out, um, you know, your station and offset information here. However, it still does expect you to fill out a project or, excuse me, a location here. Um, and you can type in what you feel is pertinent in that field. When you hit save, um, the screen will refresh and it'll uh, jump you up to this, uh, this next window, which is the DWR template window. If for whatever reason this window does not open when you click save, you can access that window by coming up here to kind of your button bar and looking for this blue button that says DWR template. When you click on that, it's going to open the same screen. You'll see that same information. Um, uh, there's just some minimal information here. Um, if we had multiple templates hooked up to this one line item, you would see multiple template options here to, to select from. Uh, however, there is just the one template for uh, pavement laid. Uh, at this time. So we can double click on this row and then it opens up the actual template. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, 
I'm sorry. So there's a, a, you know, a kind of a basic fundamental concept I want to touch on before getting into the actual, you know, data entry of the template itself. Um, for DWR templates, uh, they are a little bit different than the material templates, or can be a little bit different than material templates in that DWR templates allow for um, multiple uh, template records, if you will, to be entered on, uh, on one entry, uh, if that makes sense. I'm not sure how else to phrase that. Um, and an indicator of when you're on a, a template that allows for multiple rows um, is you see, you'll see this row one of one, or it'll say one of two, one of three, however many of these rows or records you've input into this instance of the template attached to your DWR. And then also the other indicator is this upper section here, which is called the header section, um, which you know just supplies some of the <coughs> excuse me basic information about the template. This upper section of the template is also well, where you will uh, indicate your total quantity uh, to be installed. So let's say um, the contractor in total for all records that you would be putting in down below, let's say that the total is 500. If you know that uh, right off the bat, you can go ahead and enter it and hit save. Uh, and then you can move on to the lower section of the template. And uh, yeah, thanks guys. Um, the, uh, so we're down here on the lower section of the template. We're filling out uh, kind of the location specific information about the concrete uh, pavement that was placed on this uh, particular day. To start out the template, we have, um, you know, the first question here is, this, is this a corrective DWR entry? It's going to be defaulted to no because we're assuming that every record, mo you know, most often the records that you put in the system um, are going to be just, you know, normal records, just, you know, every day-to-day -day type thing. Um, I will come back to this question later after I talk about uh, filling out the, the rest of these fields down below. Um, so moving on to the next section of the template, or uh, the next you know, question, if you will, is it's uh, asking if it's a regular area or an irregular area. Um, pretty similar to the spreadsheet that you guys were interacting with filling out in the past. Um, you know, we default it to be on the regular area, just thinking that more than often you're working with a regular shaped area and not an irregular area. <clears throat> but we do make the allowance for you to make the switch, which allows you to capture data a little bit differently. So starting out with the regular area, um, the, the template starts out with uh, supplying the beginning time and the finish time for this particular area. You then can supply the size and type of mixer, which is just a free form uh, comment box. Um, you'll type in there just similarly to what you would have typed in on the uh, Excel spreadsheet that was used in the past. Uh, then you'll fill out the thickness of the slab in feet. Again, that's just the same as what you would have filled out on the Excel spreadsheet uh, uh, in the past. We defaulted it to one. Um, you can certainly update that to uh, match the, uh, the value that you need it to be. Uh, moving on to our next row is where we're supplying our specific stationing information as far as, you know, where we started, where we ended, you know, with your from and to, which side of the road you're on left or right. And then as you fill these things out, um, and I guess I could have been doing this while we were <coughs> talking about them, excuse me. Um, So as you, as you are filling this out, it, it, the calculated fields will start calculating out, um, you know, your length here, depending on what your stationing is. And then once you supply your width, uh, then it'll calculate out your square yards. Um, so where I was talking when we first started, if you don't happen to know off, you know, off the top of your head what your square yards to be paid is going to be, um, you can utilize these forms down below to, you know, have it calculate for you and then you just add up all the different rows and then put that value up in, up in the top. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on this uh, again here in a moment, uh, but, but let me just finish uh, talking about filling out these fields. So your square yards is calculated. Uh, the uh, form, the Excel form, would also calculate your cubic yards of concrete required for that area. You can specify your cubic yards batched, and then you can specify you know, how many yards were wasted you know, to get you the remainder of those calculations of how much was used and the percent of uh, required concrete. Uh, and then uh, 
down here at the bottom of the template, um, you have some computation comments, and then if you have wasted concrete, you can specify what the reason for the waste was. So I'm going to pause right there, and I'm going to open it up for questions if you guys have any specific questions about what we've talked about so far. Um, and, and I'm not finished yet. There are a few other uh, things that I will talk about. So if there aren't any questions, I don't blame you. If you'd like to see the whole thing, uh, I'll certainly be opening it up for more questions later. Anyway, questions so far? Looks like most people are still hanging out on mute. Um, if, if you do have a question and you're trying to ask it, you may check and see if you're on mute. I got a question for you, Ty. Go for it. What if your thickness varies? If your thickness varies, okay. Um, so I guess I, I would pose the question back to you guys in the field. My my gut would say that if you have a varying thickness, that you would need to separate those different variable areas into different records, um, which I'll cover how to how to add more records to this entry uh, momentarily. Um, but if you needed to document that this section of the pavement is 12 inches thick, and then you know from station 200 to 300 is 13 inches thick, that those would kind of be two separate records. But I guess I would, I would maybe pose the question back to you, Brian. I think that was Brian who asked, um, is when you were filling out the Excel form uh, in the past, how did you guys document that? That was a question back back to Brian or whoever just asked me that question. Um, you, you know, the other alternative could be you could use it as an irregular area. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, so I guess so. The answer to what we would do is just average the area out to enter that information in there. Okay. And. <clears throat> Gosh, I'm sorry, guys. Excuse me, a little frog in my throat this morning. If that's what you did in the past, um, and, and feel free any, anybody to jump in and say, if, if you guys are having trouble hearing me, I know it sometimes gets kind of loud where I'm at, and um, if I need to, I can try to move to another space. But um, if that's what you guys were doing in the past, Brian, I, I would say you're welcome to do the same here. Um, you know, the I guess you know what what my expectation would be for this template would be the same as what you guys were doing on the Excel form. Everything that you could do on the Excel form, you can still do here. Um, I mean, as far as the, the field that you're entering and the information that you're supplying. So um, I, I don't think <clears throat> this is any any more restrictive than what the uh, the template, or the, excuse me, the Excel form was. So is that answering your question, Brian? Yeah, we're just discussing it a little more here, but I think you're on the right track. Okay. I mean, certainly if, you know, you know, for the best answer for that question, I, I'm going to defer to Andy Dearmont, and we can take an action item, uh, my, me or my staff can take the action item here to follow up with Andy to clarify what his expectation would be for this record. Um, so I know he and, you know, maybe Jeremy, so to speak, and, you know, in the pavement pouring group, they're kind of the, you know, in central complex, kind of the owners or the primary users of that information that you guys are supplying. So, um, you know, I, I don't know that I am, you know, the right person to fully answer that question, but I think, you know, this uh, template, like the Excel form, allows for you to do it one of multiple ways. So, um, yeah, I think the issue, we're, the issue we're kind of discussing right now is if you put, you know, even if you average out the thickness of, of uh, area when they go out to core it, you know, are they going to go by the thickness that you put in here? And if it doesn't match that, what's going to happen? That That's part of the question. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think Jeremy's crew, uh, and again, this is going to be a question for Jeremy to answer, but I think Jeremy's crew is going to utilize what the, what the plan says the thickness should be for determining, you know, um, a, deficient, a deficient thickness on a core. Um, so, you know, given a particular location on the project, if per the plans it says it's supposed to be 13 inches, that's what they're going to expect. So I, I, I don't know that I'm quite fully answering your question, but um, 
you know, I, I would say, you know, obviously the, the more distinct and the more, you know, accurate you guys can be with, you know, the recording of, you know, these specific thicknesses, you know, uh, length, with those type of things for given areas that would be better. Um, but I understand sometimes, you know, that going to that kind of extreme level of detail may be um, very tedious. Um, so I, I, I don't think I'm really giving you guys the, the answer on this other than just kind of offering options. Um, and we'll have to follow up. Uh, we'll follow up when we send out the, the email with the recording. We'll try to have the answers collected from Andy and uh, Jeremy and uh, give you guys those answers back. Uh, oops, I just saw a question pop up on my screen. Let me see what that was. Uh, Adam is asking, would it be possible to change the thickness of slab from feet to inches? Um, it, it's not an impossibility. Um, we, we left it at feet because that's what the Excel form did. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I, I guess I, you know, I would defer to you know, maybe the, the Coma team and or, you know, Jeremy and um, and Andy again on that one. If, if that's kind of the, the group consensus that, yeah, let's switch that to inches because that makes more sense. Um, that's certainly something we can do. Um, but th right now, this is currently how it was developed, uh, just because we were basically just trying to mirror what that Excel form was doing uh, at the current moment. So hopefully that answers your question, Adam. Uh, okay, any more questions before we move on? Oh, I see we have one more. Okay, Adam, I see your thank you. And then I uh, see a question from Russ. Why don't, why doesn't the total square yard, or square yard quantity uh, accumulate for you? Okay, so I was going to address that. Um, before I address that, let me first show you guys how to add a um, second record here. Um, it's fairly easy to do. You just click on the new button up here, and then you'll see this change from row two up to. Uh, and then you can just supply all that same information again for the additional area. So if you're kind of equi you know, equating this over to what the Excel form was of the past, um, you know, you would have multiple rows in that spreadsheet. Um, so that's essentially what each one of these different rows here, you know, these new screens that you add, um, that's essentially what those represent. So you can just keep clicking the new button and you can add as many rows as you want. And then to access the different rows, you use this arrow here and depending on where you are in the rows, you'll have an up arrow, a down arrow, or both. Um, and you can see I'm just arrowing through these different records. So back to Russ's question. Why doesn't this accumulate for you? That, that is the question I'm assuming that you're asking. The reason that we don't have that accumulating for you based on you know, your quantities that are accumulating down here on the rows was because we identified that there were, were going to be certain situations where you guys would, may, would not want that to happen. So to give you guys in the field the best flexibility to, you know, address um, a quantity installed or payment to the contractor, um, to give you guys the best flexibility, we decided not to make that field a computed field uh, and rather just keep it simple, allow you guys to um, you know, enter your, you know, your pavement laid, you know, area records on the lower half and then do your quantity installed placement on the upper half. Um, certainly, <clears throat> it, you know, it, it could have been a possibility to, to have it do the accumulation and totaling for you. Um, but it, it um, you know, the, there was a certain level of complexity with it that, um, you know, would have, you know, potentially made this field locked out. Uh, and not giving you guys the flexibility to change it. Um, is that answering your question, Russ? More room for errors? Uh, certainly. Uh, yeah, you guys, if, if what you're saying is, you know, you could um, be adding up your totals here across your different records, and if you miskey something or mistype something, <clears throat> you wouldn't translate that total up here to the top. Um, that, that certainly is a possibility. I mean, that's something that exists currently. Um, between the, you know, the Excel form and putting the entry in Site Manager. Um, so, you know, we, we didn't feel like doing it, doing the template here in Site Manager was, you know, you know really different than what the current process was um, as far as that goes for potential, um, you know, miscalculated uh, quantities or whatever. Um, but it, what it really came down to is that flexibility and, and allowing you guys to to do what you needed to do on that given entry. Um, 
you know, the, you know, an example of being able to want, wanting to be able to do something outside of one of these entries on the lower half of the screen would be if you're doing a, a correction entry for one reason or another. Um, for just the instance where maybe say something didn't uh, accumulate correctly or um, it didn't total correctly or whatever, we wanted to give you guys the ability to make those changes as needed. Is that uh, answering your question, Russ? Yeah, can you hear me, Tyler? I can hear you now, yes. Okay. No, I guess I would have preferred to see that actually add those all together and then if I had one that I needed to correct, it would only be one that way. You know, things are getting added like they currently are if I'd make separate entries in a DWR anyway. Because at least before sure. we're adding yeah. things up, and it just seems to me like now we're going to have to go through and punch things through a calculator that are already there. Makes sense. Yeah, I, 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 I certainly can't disagree with you. Um, I, you know, it was something that we definitely did talk about. Um, I don't remember if, if, if Ben or, um, you know, Brian or others who would have been on the, you know, who are, on, who are on the coma team and who would have seen this before, if those guys remember talking about it before or not. Um, but what I can offer is this, um, you know, the initial intention here was to replace the spreadsheet functionality. And, and you know, I think we're, we're accomplishing that with capturing it here on the template. Um, but perhaps in the future, um, you know, we can consider, you know, adding in a, an accumulation or, a, you know, a running total field to, to kind of facilitate that, you know, you know, alleviate that, uh, you know, that desire to, to have it do it on its own without you guys having to interact with it. Would that, would that be okay? Yeah, that's, a, like I said, that's obviously just my opinion, but I think from an inspector standpoint to going through there and putting those through there, your current DWRs work. And then you add each one of those and it's accumulating it for you, opposed to having to punch in a calculator and them up and put them in. I just foresee somebody, if I was out there, I'd be grabbing all those and throwing them in a spreadsheet to add them up quick again. It's going to defeat the whole purpose. So I figured um, that would yes. be accumulate, and then you had your correct DWR entry, which I saw that, which would be cool for our adjustments. Obviously, that you know stuff that can happen. But. Yeah, and, I, and I'll, I'll touch on that here momentarily. Sorry, go ahead. Well, everybody else could actually get their opinion here too, just minus just one. But I yeah, I mean to 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 help you out, I see District Six is is commenting to me that they they were preferring a running total as well. Um, you know, um, I, I you know I do have to kind of admit to you guys. I mean, right now we're we're kind of we've kind of already completed the development on this. That's that's you know we're you know with being as close to getting into construction as we are. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that you guys would be, um, you know, you know, willing to give this a try this year, and then maybe we can, you know, cons consider changes in the future. Hi, sorry, it sounds like somebody came off of mute. Um, Brad, Brad also will be able to show you some of this totaling via the report that we'll get to later. So, you know, it's, you know, it, there is some of that, there is some other functionality that may help facilitate getting those totals for you guys. Any, any other comments about the, you know, about the, the total, like a running total or accumulated total field before we move on? Just one quick question. Does the template have to be filled out? Like if, say, for instance, you went out and you got a quantity based on GPS measurements or something like that, do you have to fill out this template or can you just enter in a payment? Um, so... That, that comes back to the kind of the flexibility thing. Um, you could technically just enter in a quantity here if you wanted. Um, you know, I think there would be an expectation for a comment down here as to why this information is not being supplied with this. But I don't think it's, um, you know, an impossibility to enter in a quantity here and enter in a comment below. Um, you know, if you shot something with the GPS, um, you know, I, I think you know, there, there may need to be some discussion with, with Andy Deermont on this um, because he, you know, he thinks of this, you know, pavement laid record as, as almost the, an official record of, of sorts uh, for that pavement. And if you guys are capturing that on GPS, I, I certainly think that's, that's, you know, there's a, lots of potential good data there as well, um, you know, and, and I'd hate for you to have to recreate the data in here. So there may be other opportunities for, you know, saving those GPS measurements 
um, instead of this. But that, that's again, that's a question for Andy Dearmont to answer. Is that answering your question, Brian? Yes, that answered my question. Okay. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Ty, I got a, <clears throat> I got a chat question for you. Okay, go for if, it. If the quantity entered is different from the total of the rows, where will the explanation of the discrepancy be entered? Okay. So um, th that's a very good question. That that didn't come up before. Um, I don't I don't know that we were given that scenario. So there's no specific comment here on uh, on the DWR uh, template window. However, um, you know if a remark was needing to be made, you could utilize your remarks bubble here and just leave a generic remark as to you know what was going on with that particular entry. Um, you know, that, that's kind of probably the, the best thing I have to offer right now. Um, otherwise, this computation comments down below uh, on, on the template would be an option as well. You could, if you had multiple records, you could identify one of the records as, and then put in a comment to say, you know, this record here, even though it's calculating this, we're only paying for this amount. Um, just kind of offering up ideas there, I guess. Hopefully that's uh, addressing that question. I got a uh, question from uh, Kent Washington. He said, can the size and type of mixer auto-fill to the new rows? Um, I may need you to clarify the question, Kent, but I'm wondering, uh, are you asking if this value here would copy to you know, subsequent rows as you're adding them to templates? Okay, yes. Um, it's, it's not something that it's programmed to do right now. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, no, that, that, that isn't happening. Um, but that could be a consideration for the future if that's desirable. Um, certainly easy, you know, fairly easy for you guys to, you know, you can select and copy and paste to, um, to the additional templates. Uh, if, if, I, if I copy it first, I suppose. Is that answering your question, Kent? Hopefully it is. Um, any other questions before I dive into, um, okay, you guys would like it to autofill. Um, we'll definitely jot that down as a consideration for the future. Again, you know, with, with getting to close to construction season as we are and um, you know, we, you know, we've completed, you know, kind of the first round of development for this and we kind of, we had sign off on this from, from Jim and Andy. Um, I don't know that we'll get these changes made this year, but certainly can consider them for uh, future uh, developments if you, if that's acceptable. Um, I, I completely agree, Ken. He's seeing, he's saying that uh, they typically use the same mixer uh, type all day long. Um, at, uh, Cannot disagree with that. I'm, I'm certain you probably use the same uh, size and type of mixer throughout the whole life of the project. Um, we did try to, I, to, to be, you know, full disclosure with you guys. We did try to identify some fields that um, maybe we could eliminate from, uh, you know, from this, uh, you know, from this data entry, if you will. Um, you know, and I think we maybe did eliminate one or two. Um, but uh, this one was still desirable by, by Andy. And the reason that we had to leave it down here in these rows as opposed, as opposed to putting it up here in kind of the header information was, um, you know, because uh, I think Andy had stated that, you know, certain projects in certain areas of the state may have concrete coming from different mixers. Um, and that's probably going to be like your Lincoln and Omaha areas, uh, potentially, not for sure, but potentially. Uh, and that would be why one row may need to have one size and type of mixer, and then uh, a different row would need it, uh, to a different record entry. Um, you know, perhaps uh, you know this field uh, could be considered a, a non-required field, and as long as you fill it out on one of your entries, um, maybe that would be acceptable. I don't know that that's a possibility. I suppose. I mean, I, just checking it right now, this field is not. I can tell you, this field isn't. There isn't an expe expectation for this field to be filled out. Um, you'll see, you know, one other thing that we try to point out nowadays is, you know, most of these templates have these watermarks on them. You can kind of see it's a template incomplete back there. Um, you know, once you've filled out kind of all of the, you know, main required fields, then that disappears. 
and it appears that the size and type of mixer is not one of those fields that we deemed as a quote unquote required field, if you will. So, uh, you know, that may give you some options for, you know, using this, you know, in kind of the short term until maybe a, a, a redevelopment of it happens. Uh, but uh, for now, this is the way it is. Is that, uh, is that answering your question to, to the best I can right now, anyway, Ken? Okay, thank you, Ken. Um, so, um, if there are no more questions, I would like to dive into the uh, doing a correction entry. Uh, to do a correction entry, back up here at this first question, you'll change this from a no to a yes, and then you'll be presented with another drop-down option. And if I was on a contract that had more records on it, and I apologize I didn't uh, create, uh, you know, more entries here, but if I was on a contract that had uh, some previous entries on it, I would be able to select that contract, um, and that, or excuse me, that DWR date by that person, that location information, that row number. I'd be able to select that record, and then uh, I would be able to make uh, changes to it down here on the lower half of the screen. And the reason that we need to select it, the previous entry that you're correcting, if that's the scenario, um, is because when you do your DWR templates and they're saved in the system and then your DWR is authorized or locked and, and the DWR gets included on a pay estimate, if all that stuff happens, that, that DWR is locked and the associated information, like the template information, is also locked and cannot be changed, modified, or removed. So to allow us to make corrections to those records, we came up with this option where you can specify what date, by what person, by what location. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm being asked if you guys uh, just remember to put yourselves on mute if, uh, if you aren't already, just so we can try to keep our um, recording as clean as possible. And, and I'm certainly probably the person who's <laughs> got the, you know, the messiest audio, audio on my end. Anyway, back to the correction entry. If you are correcting a previous day, you need to select that day, make your modifications to the lower half, uh, or you know, this you know, detail information, and then we will reflect that information uh, on, on any reporting that is done in, you know, from this information in the system. And, and you'll get a chance to see that here in a moment when, uh, when I have Brad share his screen and he shows off the report and kind of talks that through. Um, you know, otherwise, once you make your selection here, it's basically just filling out this lower half of the screen, just like we, you would do if it's a, a non-corrective entry. Um, the one other option you have here for a correcting entry is if you forgot to do an entry on a particular day, um, you have the ability to say to select add missing entry, and then you can specify the date for which that, you know, which that entry should have happened on. Okay, I, sorry, Brad. I see your comment. We'll we'll tackle that when we when we're ready. Um, so with correction entries, um, you can correct the previous days, or you can add a missing entry. Um, you can do irregular or regular areas. Um, I guess I didn't really touch on irregular areas, but they're pretty straightforward. Everything is pretty much the same except for your, your length and width disappear here, and then you're just applying a square yardage uh, amount. Uh, and then these calculations down below happen just as they normally would. Um, so the, uh, the one other option with doing a, a correction entry here is if you select a particular day and that entry, you just want that entry removed. Um, you would have the option here to, uh, once you make that, that date selection here, you would have the option here to check this box and remove that entry entirely if that entry was entered in error. Hi, Alan, I see your question here. I'll, uh, I'll get to it in a moment. Okay, so that is the template and supplying the information. Hopefully you guys are, you know, as you're looking at it here on screen, hopefully you're identifying that, you know, you know, all, you know, most of this information I should say is recognizable from the, uh, from the previous, you know, spreadsheet that you would have used in the past. Um, so before we dive into the report, 
Uh, I'm going to pause again for any questions that you guys may have about the irregular areas usage or correction entries. So go ahead if you have questions. And just while you guys are thinking that over or coming off of mute, I'm going to address, uh, get ready to address Alan's question. Let's see, District 2, question is regarding the size and the type of mixer. Is that the trucks on site or the mixing plan permission? Uh, I guess I, Alan, I may need you to clarify that question a little bit to me. Are you saying that you don't know the, the size and type of mixer uh, on your guys' projects? All you know is the trucks. Is that what you're saying? You may, you may have to send me a message. I'll keep an eye on it, Alan, and try to answer it. Any questions uh, coming back to corrective entries or uh, irregular areas? Any questions about that? Okay. Um, well, if there aren't any specific questions about that, um, I we will move on to the uh, to the report. So you guys can have a look at that. Um, I don't think I have anything else to show here. Just just like the uh, you know the material templates, you guys can resize these windows to to fit your screen as needed. Um, hopefully, all the scroll bars are accessible to you, etc. Uh, Brad, are you on the call? Are you ready to talk about the report? No, there we go. I think I'm I think I'm on the call. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, you, I'm ready to. You, based on your comment, Brad, do you want me to just keep sharing my screen uh, and I just, you know, you just talk it through and tell me what to do, or do you want to share your screen? Um, you know, I can go. If we're going to go back and forth between the template and the report, um, I may try and just send you the. I'll send you the link here, and then um, we can just kind of go that route. I went ahead and. Uh, hopefully got this corrected, but if you step back, uh, there should still be one in there uh, called Concrete Pavement Laid Report. Okay, so hey, there you guys, should be able I'm gonna, to... I'm going to switch over to, to Google Chrome here, you guys, just because we're a little more successful with Google Chrome than we are Internet Explorer. All right, Brad, where do I need to go? Okay, so go ahead and pull up your contract and your line item, and it'll auto-populate. It just gives a full range of dates here, so it's going to show everything. Um, so this this is going to show your main entry, and I'll just talk about the report just a little bit itself, kind of the information that's here. Um, you've got your your contract information in the in the header, um, trying to match this up just a little bit to the to the spreadsheet as far as the content, and then in order to um, yeah, so you'll see your contractor, the name of the road, and the class of concrete. And then you'll have your detail rows that are going to show up underneath this, and they're going to show up based on the pavement laid date. Um, so for each day that you had pavement laid and DWR entries that match up to it, you'll see a, a row that goes in there for that. And if there were multiple inspectors, each inspector's information is going to show up in this as well. Um, we were able to get in, uh, you know, if there was the time and the high and low, a little bit about the weather there. Uh, and then each of the um, kind of the, the details of where this took place and the length, width, and of course, and all the other information is shared out across the rest of the report there. Um, so you're able to, to see that. Um, so then as, as Ty makes changes to his template here, um, we'll be able to see how just, you know, creating another record is going to go ahead and uh, be able to show up then on the report, and you'll see those daily totals update, and also contract totals will be able to update in there as well. And I do actually have a, um, I have in our demo environment, I do have a contract set up there that has, I basically tried to set up all the different scenarios and possibilities. That'd be good, Brad. Let's go over there and look at that one. That would be better. I was going to try to set that up, but um, okay. 
did not did not have enough time apparently. <clears throat> yeah, so our contract right, here is going to be 3924 uh, BF and uh, 46, yeah. So this is going to show kind of some extreme possibilities here, <laughs> um, but it, it does show, you can see where the where you have your crossed out lines, that's going to indicate that that was a corrective action that was taken. Uh, so then you, we wanted to be able to capture, okay, this information had been entered at one point, but it's no longer in the actual calculation. So then you're able to see the progression of, uh, of how things changed as you were entering those different templates. So this gives you kind of day by day what happened on uh, a particular uh, line item, and uh, you're able to see then your t your daily totals uh, come on across. Are you able to see you know your reason for waste, uh, your percentages, and and be able to get a an idea for what's happening on on the contract? So the way I like to think about these these struck out lines is is if you kind of think about those of us who are old enough to remember the old field book where everything was handwritten in. Um, everybody remembers the rules of those. I'm presuming is that, there, you know, there was no erasing in those days. You would strike it out and you would write in a new line to, to represent what you were recording. So that's what I kind of like to equate these struck out rows to. We're acknowledging that they're still in the system. They were recorded at one time, but they are no longer valid records, basically. And you know, one of the things that's really nice about this report is that as you're entering the information, um, you know, you can just get in there, enter your data, and and you may not have a complete picture of it. But once you get into the report here, then you're able to see uh, kind of everything that's actually happening on it. So you can kind of have a little bit of that back and forth um, to quickly be able to understand what's what's happening with it. Any questions from anybody out in the districts on this? I see, oh, I guess this chat is just from, from Brad. Yeah, I was just giving you that quick link. <laughs> looks like looks like Alan may have responded to me here. Ooh, okay, I'll, uh, I'll come back to that and we'll, we'll first address questions uh, that folks may have about, excuse me, about the reports or report, singular. <laughs> Any questions from anybody out in the field? Um, I, I do have to apologize to you guys. I will have to drop off of this call in, in about five minutes uh, to go to another meeting. Um, you know, my staff, whether it's Brad, uh, Zach, Andy, Bob, whoever, whoever's all on the call, they are um, I'm sure they are more than happy to hang out on the call and, and answer any further questions that you guys may have if, if uh, those of you are still sitting on the call. Um, I'll uh, quickly jump over to Alan's question and we can try to address that. Uh, here in District 2, the majority of projects will be utilizing a readiness plan versus a batch plan on the project. The inspectors on the project will collect truck tickets during the payment process. There are inspectors assigned to the concrete plants here in District 2, but they will be dealing with various projects and receiving the concrete. Mm -hmm. What information uh, is needed to be supplied by the inspectors at the concrete plants or by the inspectors on the site uh, during the paving process with the average from the trucks that are arriving on site? Um, yeah, I, I, we're cert we certainly recognize that's how you guys operate in District 2, that there are plant inspectors and then there are project inspectors. So. I guess for those who are on the call and uh, working in other areas of the state, uh, District 2 in the Omaha office specifically works a, has a little bit of different operating procedure as far as uh, you know where the inspectors are, are located is when they're working. Um, I, I'm, I'm still not totally sure I am understanding your question. If somebody else uh, on the call and my staff is understanding what he's asking, I presume what we're asking about here is you know the difference that the, the project inspection staff in District 2 
may not know what the size and type of mixer is on the, on the project, but the plant inspectors would know that information. Um, I guess my advice, if that is truly what the issue is, Alan, um, my advice would be to, um, you know, keep handling that situation as, as you guys currently are, um, because the pavement laid spreadsheet that you guys have used up until this point, up until this point, um, contained that that information or was it there was an expectation to supply that information I think um, so however that was getting communicated to uh, you know or getting added to the pro you know to that spreadsheet in the past um, I'd say we just probably need to figure out you know what that you know current process is and just make sure that you know this new process can still keep uh, enduring that um, hopefully that that's the question um, but like I said if somebody else understands what he's saying differently, um, you know, I'd certainly be uh, open to hearing that. Any any other questions? <clears throat> I can open the, I can open it up to questions on any of it, whether it's the template or the report. Ty, just while we while I've got you here, um, do you want to go ahead and enter just a a new an additional value in your for D for your uh, DWR template and then just see how it updates on the report itself. Uh, sure. We can just do this while while people are thinking other questions and Looks like I saw a question pop up. Uh, Justin uh, is asking if someone uh, were to retire or, or quit, uh, will it be possible to revise their entries or will you only be able to revise your own? Um, so yes, you can revise others' entries if need be um, through this dropdown. Uh, I, I apologize that I don't have this very successfully set up right now to see um, my, you know, others' entries, but if you notice this CMS UID column, Right here, that is the user ID of the of the individual who made the original entry. So you'll see your DWR date, the person who made the entry, um, the location sequence number, location uh, info, you know, installed uh, description. Um, just to, that's just a, to supply a little more distinct information about where you're at, and then the the row serial number, row sequence number. So how all these fields correspond? Obviously, date and, and user ID. You recognize those. This row sequence number is going to be this row number here, and the location sequence number there is going to be this location sequence number here. That's that's how you can can read that that drop down to see what you know where that you know where this row may be coming from. All right, Brad, so I think I've got another entry saved here, so we're thinking if I refresh, we should see another row, is that correct? Yep, yeah, it should be showing up in there now. There you go. Oh, I guess one of the things I've, I've forgotten to mention on it too, uh, there's a little asterisk uh, beside the time laid on the began. And that matches up, then that'll help let you know if it's a incomplete or a locked template, or um, kind of gives you a little bit of insight into whether or not that information is final, or if you, or if there's something still being put into it that's going to be uh, saved out later. Good, good point, Brad. Okay, guys. Well. If there aren't any more specific questions that you need me to answer right now at this moment, I, I think I need to drop off of the call so I can go to uh, meet with uh, many of your bosses, <laughs> uh, the DCEs, uh, and I will leave you guys in the capable hands of uh, Brad, Zach, uh, Andy, and Bob, who's on the call, I think. Yep. And I guess I don't know if Ryan is on the call as well, but they're all very capable, uh, can answer any, any additional questions you guys may have. Um, and okay. if you don't have any additional questions, I think that kind of is basically it for our, you know, what we were going to show and present. Um, if you would like, um, you know, Brad or one of the others can 
uh, share their screen and you know go through some more examples if you have questions and you need to want to see something in better detail than what I was able to cover. Um, and like I said, if, you, if not, thanks for joining, and uh, we'll be posting the recording before long. Hey, Brad, I've got another question for you. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay, Thanks, so all corrective entries will result in a struck out line on the report and a new revised line with the new information? Yes. Yeah, so when, you're, when there is a corrective action, uh, it's going to strike out the old one, and then the new information uh, will be put in after it. Uh, it does depend on if it's a... Uh, like if you're just doing, if you're just removing the line and you're not entering a new one, it's just going to stay struck out. Um, so you, you'll have some different options depending on on how you're filling out the uh, template information. Even if it's modified before an estimate. Yeah. So the report's going to update as soon as you hit save on the template. Um, and then once you're, once you have the estimate generated, then at that point it's going to lock those templates, uh, and so you won't make, be able to make any more changes to them at that point. So it'll be in that status. Any other questions? Or did I answer that well enough? Did that make sense? Okay. Um, I'm just going to leave it open just for another minute, but if there's no other uh, questions, then I think we'll go ahead and close it out. And I want to thank everyone for participating today and being able to listen in. And as you get in there and start using the, the payment laid templates, you know, feel free to give us a call and uh, if, as you have questions and you need additional help. And again, appreciate your time.